Okay, so finally we're at the meat of today's lecture. So what is a tensor? You've probably heard the notion of tensor properties of crystals. So one way to interpret tensors is to think of them as a generalization of scalars and vectors, right? A scalar is a number. It doesn't depend on a direction. A vector is has both a magnitude and a direction. So we can call the number of directions you need to describe a property the rank of a tensor. So a scalar is a rank zero tensor. A vector is the first rank tensor. And something that you need two directions to describe would be a second rank tensor. Something that you need um, and examples of second rank tensors are stress and strain, right? To define stress, you need to know both the surface that you're calculating your area on, right? So you need to use a nor the normal or orthogonal vector to the surface. You also need to know what the force vector on that surface is. So there's two directions associated with stress. A third rank tensor would be the piezoelectric tensor, right? You, you need a, um, well, we'll talk about that later. Uh, example of a fourth order tensor is the elastic stiffness. Because um, the elastic stiffness relates stress to strain. And you need two directions for stress and two directions for strain. So therefore, you need four directions for the uh, elasticity tensor. So the, as I said, the rank of a tensor is defined by the number of directions or the dimensionality of the array that you required to describe it. Um, so, you know, not to beat on a dead horse here, but properties that require one direction can be described by a column vector. A vector is just a row of numbers or a column of numbers. Properties uh, that require two directions or second rank tensors can be described by nine numbers as a three by three matrix. You've seen stress matrices before. Um, and in general, a uh, nth rank tensor needs to be described by three raised to the n coefficients. Right, And so if this bothers you or you feel that you want a little brush up, Here's a link, there's a link here to a very useful YouTube video that describes this in a very non-mathematical way. Okay, back to mappings. Linear transformations as mappings. Technically, tensors are a bilinear mapping, but we won't, we won't get into that. Um, so, one way, I think the most useful way to think of tensors uh, can be thought of uh, mappings between tensors of lower, lower rank. Right? So multiplying a vector by a scalar, uh, it scales the magnitude of the vector, but it doesn't change the direction of a vector. Right? So a first rank tensor times a zero rank tensor also gives you a first rank tensor. Um, right? But if we want a, a function that, that takes a vector input and outputs a a vector where we change the direction, that's a second rank tensor. So a second rank tensor maps a uh, tensor of rank one or a vector onto another vector. So rank two um, can map a scalar to a second rank tensor or a second rank tensor or a first rank tensor to another first rank tensor. You, you always sum the inputs and outputs. So rank two, stress, the stress maps the normal vector to a surface to the force acting on that surface. Thermal expansion is also a second rank tensor. It maps a temperature change, which is rank zero, to an elastic strain, which is uh, rank two. Oh, I'm getting email notifications. Um, rank three is the uh, piezoelectric tensor. It maps a stress to a electric polarization. Rank two to rank one, two plus one gives you three. So you need a third rank tensor for the piezoelectric tensor. And rank four, elastic stress to elastic strain, rank is a rank four tensor.
So here's a whole bunch of uh, different material properties and the rank that they are. Um, and you get weird ones, right? You can have the... Uh, oh, none of the second order ones are on here, right? So thermal pressure, right? Stress to temperature changes. The piezo uh, caloric effect is a mapping between stress and entropy. Uh, heat capacity is a zero rank tensor mapping temperature to entropy. Right? There's thermoelectric effects, um, uh, the uh, electrocaloric. You can have higher uh, second order effects, the thermoelectromagnetocaloric effect, um, which gets into very high stuff. Maybe we'll talk about that uh, um, uh, at the end of the semester, depending on, on how things go. But this is kind of an important chart just to kind of keep in mind and understand uh, when people talk about the property, right, most of the time it's not a simple scalar number, right? The property is properties of materials are tensors for the most part, right? And this comes down because most materials, um, uh, many materials are crystalline, right? So this naturally comes up. But even amorphous uh, materials may have an anisotropy to them that you need a tensorial property to describe. So there's a couple, um, just like we talked about, ma matrix operations. We're going to generalize a couple, a couple of those to some important tensor operations. Uh, the ones you're probably most familiar with are the inner products or contractions, right? Matrix multiplication, right? Ax equals b. We're mapping a first rank tensor onto another first rank tensor. Um, and it's called a contraction because we have two indices here. We have a repeated index, so we have a summation over j. So ax equals b is aij xj. We sum over the dummy index j, and we're left with uh, just i. Right. Another contraction is the left multiplication of a second order tensor by a fourth rank tensor. Where now we're summing over k and l, so we're contracting over k and l. Uh, so c i j k l epsilon k l equals sigma i j. Now it's important to to keep in mind um, a fourth, third rank, fourth rank, and higher order tensors don't have nice matrix representations. Um, so we have to write them either in direct or we have to write out all the terms. Um, the scalar product uh, of two vectors, A transpose A, or the dot product, A dot A, or A I A I, um, that's uh, a contraction. The scalar product of two second rank tensors is a double contraction, sigma I J, epsilon I J. This is an important one because this uh, is related to the elastic strain energy. So you'll see terms that come up like this a lot. Uh, so that's how we use tensors to do mapping. So how do we make tensors from lower order ones? So that's the outer or tensor product. Some references call it the dyadic product of two tensors. This is A dyad B. So this is a vector. This is a vector. The dyadic product gives you a second rank tensor. So AIBJ gives you CIJ. Uh, you can do the same thing with a second rank tensor and a first rank tensor. AIJBK to give you CIJK. Um, in matrix notation, the inner product is for two vectors. Let's just think about vectors. This would be A transpose A. So a, if A is a 3 by 1 matrix, this is now a 1 by 3 times a 3 by 1 gives you a 1 by 1. The outer product would be A, A transpose. A 3 by 1 times a 1 by 3 gives you a 3 by 3. Okay. So why do we need tensors? Right. We have 
multivariable functions, right? We can write out the equations for these. Why on earth do we need to introduce some new mathematical theory? And the important part of all this tensor business is that they're coordinate frame independent. It doesn't matter how I define my axes, my material should behave the same. If I'm doing a stress strain test, um, it shouldn't matter which direction I call X in my material, right? If I, if I call X along the rolling direction of a piece of sheet metal and someone else calls X the transverse direction on a piece of sheet metal, and if I test along the rolling direction, whether I call it X or whether I call it Y, I should get the same results and I should be able to, to compare my results to someone else's, right? It doesn't matter, um, it should never matter how we define our, our axes. We should always be able to transform our data to the right physical system. And that is what uh, tensors are for. In fact, if you, if you took uh, tensor theory from a math department, it would define them as bilinear or multilinear mappings that obey a certain set of transformation rules. And we'll talk about those transformation rules in the next, uh, in the next part, coordinate transformations.